One of the questions we get asked all the time is, Bob and Carrie, what advice can you give us that want to go full time in our RV? What advice can you give us to make that happen? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Join us, shall you? Hello redesigners and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new, I'm Carrie. I'm Bob and in 2022, Carrie and I sold everything we owned. We hit the road full time in our RV that's hiding behind the camera. And uh, we are what they call full time RVers, but we like to call ourselves full time travelers. travelers. And we're gonna share our journey of how our journey started with you so that if you were in the position that we were in in 2022, you can start getting on the road in as little as, well, 45 days. <laughs> For those of you wondering today, we are in Georgia. More specifically than that, we are in Brunswick, Georgia. And more specifically than that, Whoa. we are at Coastal Georgia RV Resort. We wanna thank the staff here for hosting us for the past three weeks. We have had a great time in this 93 plus <laughs> weather here in August. So uh, if you happen to be in the neighborhood of Brunswick, Georgia, stop in and say hello to Earl and all his superior staff. All right, now before you can hit the road and have that life living free like a life redesign does, there's a couple of steps you're gonna need to make. And that first one is if you have a sticks and bricks, well, Carrie. It's gotta go, you gotta sell it. Now this, one statement will spark more controversy in our comment sections than anything I have ever said in the five years that we've been on YouTube or however long it's been. Wow. <laughs> uh, we chose to sell our house completely because we wanted zero reasons to have to stop living the lifestyle until we decided it was time. And that's not an easy task. And we've heard everything from you've given up a, an appreciating asset to have a depreciating asset. And we don't look at it that way. We look at it simply as we now have the freedom to not have this albatross around our neck that we would have to constantly be concerned about. I don't want to be a landlord. Carrie doesn't no. want to be a landlady. No. We want to travel full time. Now, getting to sell the house, how much of a process was that, Carrie? It was, it was tedious. So we had started with one realtor, two realtors. Mix that one too. And finally, Bob and I had a conversation that this next one that we chose, it was either gonna make or break our decision. Now, this particular person had sold many a house in our area, so I reached out to her and lo and behold, <laughs> She's she, she got the job done like quick. She's one of those that we call a perfect fit and Megan still yes. till this day is a friend of ours yes. and a friend of the channel. Uh, and that was, talk about quick. Uh, once yeah. we had nailed down that our relationship was going to be with Megan, and this is a big point here, this is why it's number one on our and list. And it's a big deal to have a realtor that you that you can talk to and, and she accepts suggestions and you can accept, accept suggestions from them. And she listened to us so much so yeah. that she had our house not sold in a year, <laughs> not sold in six months. She had our house sold out from underneath of us within like a week she sold that house before the open house so when we had gone to take off for the open house to go get our rig uh, and look for our rig because we hadn't really decided on the rig yet she had already sold the house she called us on our way down to the rv show to say hey your house is sold you're all set to go and that was the same time that the transmission blew on the first truck yeah so, so this was like all in one day so <laughs> the thing here is to be prepared oh, yeah. that for either a short quick sale or a long stay and either way uh, you'll find yourself like us we were had to be out within 45 days uh, we went from selling things casually mm -hmm. to doing fire sales and putting things out on the curb and that Facebook marketplace Ugh. with free piles for days. Now keep in mind, we had been in that house for 17 years. We had 17 years worth of stuff. And I mean uh, yeah. stuff. So it, once you've made that decision that you're gonna do this by doing it here and watching our videos and 
probably a thousand others on YouTube, you've already made that decision. Start paring your stuff down now, unless you want to be, well, one of those people that have storage units everywhere because it will happen faster than you think. Yep. Hey, now the next part of this is, well, it's the easiest, but yet the hardest, and that is finding. Finding the right rig. And uh, here's the thing that gets us in trouble yet again, is we highly advise to not buy that rig at an RV show. Yes, go to an RV show, Definitely do your comparison go. shopping. We did, and we ended up with one that wasn't even on our list, uh, but don't buy at the RV show because you are going to be in a situation where most of these RV shows fly in people from all over the country to cover this stuff. We were clued in by a Camping World uh, salesperson of all things who said, hey, I'm from four states away, so I'm not going to be the guy you're doing the deal with. In fact, everybody here is from a different region. And uh, really buying a rig from somewhere that you know you can go back to is probably a good thing. RV shows are great. You can meet all your YouTube personalities, except for us at any of them. <laughs> but uh, you can go in and you can uh, look at all of them. But chances are, if you're buying a rig, don't buy it at the RV show. Skip that because you don't want to be buying one that you can't have an inspection done on. Because remember, you're going to be living in this. Right. And two, you want to make sure that the person you're dealing with is going to be the person that's going to handle stuff on the back end. And that rig is everything once you get out here. And that's why you see so many people that they get out here and within six months, they're buying a new rig. And uh, how long have we had Humphrey Care? We are going on two years. Two oh years with gosh. Humphrey. I and can't even remember how long we've been married, let alone anything else. 30 years in case you're keeping track, <laughs> uh, unlike some people. But uh, yeah, that's a big thing. And before we go into the next point, I want to bring up something really quick. Yeah. Uh, Carrie and I do not have a pension. We do not have a trust fund. We do not have real estate assets that we're living off of. We are simply, I work full time. Carrie handles all our social media and all the YouTube stuff. Um, and well, our YouTube revenue, ad revenue, we donate out. So we're not using that income. Uh, so there's little things like this that you know your finances are gonna play a part of. So make sure that when you're comparing yourself to somebody else that you're comparing apples to apples. All right, so number three. Oh, number three is the biggest decision you're gonna make outside of which mattress yeah. do you buy for your RV. I don't know about that. Don't but worry, anyway, you're not gonna see that commercial here either. Yeah, is picking your domicile state. And this is a tough one because you need to pick a state that's gonna be RV friendly mm -hmm. and you need to pick a state, as we said before, that's gonna align with your personal and, well, unfortunately, political views as well mm -hmm. because all of that will come to play uh, went down the road, especially as you have people that want to take rights from RVers away. Mm -hmm. uh, and we saw this issue a little bit with South Dakota, where the laws kept changing up there. And uh, we chose... Well, we chose Florida. So for us, we were always in that area from the Carolinas to Florida. So for us, it just made sense all around. Yeah, so Florida's been fantastic for us. We use my RV mail. Yep. Uh, they actually assisted us with getting us in the touch with the proper people to get this domiciles thing going. The whole process was pretty painless. They handle all our mail. Yeah, well, they provided us with the mail. They provided us with a legal address. And so they also provided the county in which we are legal residents of. And so you just call the county get all your paperwork in order, you go in, it, and I'm telling you, it's like a half hour if that process. It was super easy. And if you go back in through the archives, we do have a video up that says how we domiciled in under an hour in yeah. Florida. That goes into a little more detail as what the experience was, but for us, very painless, easy, simple process. Um, and we will say the thing to do that we didn't do ahead of time is to reach out to your banks our credit union from New Hampshire is fantastic about us and our Florida address. Capital One took a little bit of convincing because that address still is a commercial address. And it doesn't matter if you use my RV mail or escapees, this has to do more with federal laws and certain banks in the way they interpret that. Wells Fargo wanted us to lie on our forms and use a friend's or- Our son's address. address. And we're not a big fan of lying on anything no. because inevitably it will come up and bite you in the butt. And we prefer to do things well, honestly and legally. And uh, we are very grateful for the people at my RV mail that got us going, as well as the county in Florida that we did this all in. They've been fantastic. Okay, now, as equal to finding that domicile state is the next point, and that is what, Carrie? 
how long you're in it for. How long do you plan on traveling? Is it one year, two year, five years, forever? Yeah, especially like us, we are in this until the wheels fall off mm -hmm. or until Carrie decides she's sick of being married to me. And I'm surprised years. she isn't, yeah. And only one of us knew it was 30 years today. It was me. But at any rate, you need to know how long you are going to be in this for. We have talked to literally tens of twenties of people <laughs> who have said that when you're talking to them and their spouse, the husband is like, we are in this until we're 90. And the wives over there are like, like no, we were done three weeks ago. You know, honey. <laughs> yeah, it, you really need to know, and that's going to determine a lot of things. That, for us, knowing that we were in this long term, because we didn't want to be in New England anymore, mm -hmm. we just wanted to see different things. Carrie and I are only in our 50s, early 50s, mind you, and uh, we want to keep doing this until it's retirement age, and then we'll figure it out from there. Uh, that's a big deal. And that's why selling everything for us made the best sense, so we don't have to go back to that. We meet people every day that have been doing this for 30 years. We meet people who have been doing this for two minutes and have a one year, two year. The average, in case you were wondering, is about five years, depending on how fast you go. And going fast or slow is a whole other topic. But that's about the average lifespan is about five years for the casual person. You like us and you like to take life slow and like to see where it goes, you could be out here to the end of time. And that's going to segue right into the yeah, next point. So now you have your rig, you have your domicile state, you're good to go, but where are you going to stay? <laughs> now, <laughs> we fell into the whole thousand trails is going to be your answer to everything dream, just like probably hundreds of other people. And it uh, was for the first year. And we did enjoy our time in thousand trails, but we did start to notice that thousand trails attracted a lot of unhappy people. And before anybody jumps all over us yet again, true, go on any Facebook group, read the reviews, go on any uh, review site of a Thousand Trails campground and the best, and I mean the absolute best compliment that anyone will give a Thousand Trails is? It's good. It's, it's good okay. enough. It's okay. It suits the need. And that's Seriously. about it. Uh, Carrie and I didn't join this lifestyle to suit the need or be outside of the areas of interest. We chose this lifestyle to see the country, to be in the thick of it, and be right here in Alligator Soup, right by <laughs> I-95. We're not playing around. And that's why Thousand Trails, again, was great for the first year, yep. but we've been loving life outside of the park system and just doing our thing. We find the people are friendlier. Mm -hmm. We find people are equally as motivated. We're meeting people from all walks of lives that are having a good time. And that's something to be said about when you're paying for certain amenities in certain places and people are happy, that changes your scope of view on everything. I still think the Thousand Trails for the first year, just because we were kind of skittish as to what was out there and what yep. was happening and what we're gonna be doing, was a, it was a great thing for us that first year. And don't get me wrong, yeah. we think Thousand Trails is a tremendous value and right. if you need that, affordability it's a great concept um, we just are lucky enough to be in a position that financially we didn't need a thousand trails it was a great thing to save us money the fruit like carrie said for the first year we learned so much about our rig and about our equipment but the more that we dove into it we found personally the parks are subpar they're all in need of repair it's a constant struggle to get things done and uh yeah, where we can just roll in here and know that Earl has had us covered from the time that we got here and he can't wait till we get back yes. is an amazing thing. So for those of you that are starting out, let me know in the comments below, where do you plan on being? Where, do you, where are you gonna go? And our next point here very simply was gonna be unload your stuff. And that means simply get rid of all the crap that is an albatross to you. I'm talking about that record collection of Raquel Welch. I'm talking yeah. about, uh, yeah, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> but uh, I'm talking about all those Suzanne Summers VHS tapes about getting the perfect thighs. Get rid of it all because you're not going to need it on the road, nor are you going to want to lug this everywhere with you. Yeah. And this is a big thing is paring down, paring down, paring down, paring down. And it's great. And not to be a Penelope Downer here, <laughs> but... All of the things that I wanted our kids to have, they did. So when, if we were home and I, when I do die, 
Jeez. sorry. <laughs> but they don't have to fight over everything. I gave them everything that I wanted them to have, and then they got to choose what they wanted above and beyond that. So that helped too. And that's why we are always saying that there's no storage units backing life redesigned. Yeah. We really got rid of everything because to enjoy this lifestyle, you really need to pare down everything. And uh, there is no more walk-in closets of clothes for us. There's about eight shirts, about four <laughs> pairs of pants, and a couple of pairs of shoes. That's it. Oh, I do have underwear. But you're going to have to keep that in mind is you're going to want to go as small as possible and you'll be surprised how many times that if you do that simple little thing is keep everything small you'll be thanking us time and time again because it's just clutter now as we said in the top of the video that carrie and i are not trust fund babies we're not sitting here on a pension we're not uh, living off of real estate investment somewhere we're just simply living and uh, I work remote, and that presents a whole other set of challenges. Now, I've covered internet in the past. In fact, Connectin is a huge sponsor of our channel and uh, has provided internet for us for the past year all over the country. And it has made working from, ho well, home uh, <laughs> remotely just a piece of cake. But you're always going to run into situations where you're constantly going to be chasing Wi-Fi signal, yeah. constantly chasing cell service, constantly making sure that you have power, you have backup for those, especially if your job is like mine, you know, that pays the bills. It's very easy to sit there and tell everybody it's a carefree lifestyle when you don't have to worry about money coming in. Yeah. But when you have to worry about money coming in, you're going to have to make sure that you do your research. Each one of these topics is us specific, but for you, you need to do your own research and make sure that you're gonna have your butt covered because the last thing you wanna be is that new remote employee begging your boss for some time because you can't get your Wi-Fi connection going. Not a good thing to do at all. Now for this next shot, if you see some tall grass in the background, it's not that the staff here hasn't been taking care of things. There was a hurricane that came through here and uh, everything's just starting now to settle down a little bit. So I don't want this to ever think that, or anybody to ever think that this is how they normally treat it. Uh, they just can't get out here because everything is a sopping wet mess. <laughs> but uh, the next part here, Carrie, Ooh, is... How deep is your love? And we're not talking about the butt grabbing that she just did. We're talking no. about... How strong is your relationship? Yeah, because uh, we'll leave everything else at the door here, but we'll just say this. If your relationship's foundation is strong, you're going to be fine. If you have demons back home, they're going to follow you on the road. Carrie and I argue. Oh, yeah. We live a normal life. As the rain comes down, maybe that's a sign. But we <laughs> oh. have not changed who we are being on the road. No. And any problems that we had prior to coming on the road have followed us along for the ride. That's just part of life and that's the thing that people seem to forget about RV life is that it is still life. And it doesn't stop. Now, in fact, when she steps on my foot for me talking with my hands, uh, that's another indicator that life has not changed just because we're on the road. <laughs> so make sure that if you're gonna do this, the last thing you want is to have your spouse and you be on a different page. And believe it or not, we do see that quite, quite often. Quite a lot. All right, now as the rain starts to get to us, uh, if it becomes dark on this video, <laughs> I will do what I can, but this is it's life unscripted. And uh, this is their next point, is how is your health? Are you able to handle this? Now, we can talk from experience for yeah. both of us on this. We both have had some pretty bad health scares on the road. Um, I have a notoriously bad back. Carrie has a, uh, well, she's a cardiac patient, so everything is amplified uh, down to a simple toothache. It's really a yeah, whole it's, process. It's fun. With this lifestyle, a lot of people tend to wait until retirement age to hit the road. And that can sometimes be a hindrance because of all those problems. This life, make no mistake about it, is difficult. There's times where you're packing up in the pouring rain, you're trying to avoid a tornado or a hurricane, <laughs> and yep. as you're hitching up, your back goes out, and uh, it, it takes a toll. It, it's, it's, we're not gonna say it's difficult to the point that it's all these thumbnails about how hard it is. No, but, but you there's have a to lot be to health. it. Right. There's a lot to it. And uh, you know, Carrie, see me, you know, I get frustrated. I'm getting older, my body's going through changes. Hello, Amelia. Uh, you know, my eyesight isn't what it used to be. And uh, just here, we tried to pack up for the hurricane that was coming through. 
and uh, we had a plethora of problems and they were all amplified because my glasses kept fogging up and I can't see anything without my glasses. This isn't gonna be a wet t-shirt contest. No, so in other words, <laughs> make sure, well, uh, make sure that you are in health yeah, to do this because you don't wanna be out here stuck. We are troopers and we are bound and determined to get through this video from hell or, well, high water. High water, yeah. Uh, the next part is uh, the big one, Carrie. Ah, uh, maintenance and chores and uh, remember as we tell you all the time this is rv life and life yeah. happens you're going to be out here doing chores you're going to be doing maintenance not to the point that you see all this over sensationalized garbage on youtube about everything breaking all the time but you are going to have to do preventive maintenance whether it's lap sealant on your rig whether it's recocking things whether it's checking air in your tires whether it's just making sure all those screws didn't come loose going down the road. By taking care of this maintenance and having those chores as I speak louder yeah. to cover the rain, you won't be one of those YouTubers that are always like, it broke. It's just a simple thing, just like at your house, you have things to do and responsibilities. Yeah. Now, speaking about things that don't go <laughs> is according to plan and uh, maintenance happening, we'd like to thank Serval which is a manufacturer of RV roof sealant. This is a universal roof sealant that they sent me down a couple of tubes for. Uh, just reviewing and checking out, we've had the pleasure of working with this product up on the roof of Humphrey here uh, in 97 degree weather. This stuff has actually performed really, really well as a uh, maintenance tool and is now gonna be permanently in our arsenal. Stuff has a working temperature of negative 40 degrees up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit um, and has performed flawlessly in all of our tests. So if you're looking for a roof sealant to get that maintenance done before, well, you know, the bad weather flies is apparently I'm behind, uh, check out Serval right here. I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link in the video description. Uh, again, great product and we wanna thank Serval for sending that out. Now back to the video. We're still here. It's still raining, but we're still here. That's okay. This last one, Gary, this no. one guts me every time we see something like this comes over, especially for somebody who's new and starting out. Yeah. Be prepared for the hate, like yeah. from your friends, from your family, or just people that don't understand what and why you're doing. Or for the failed YouTube channels that have nothing left to discuss, they're gonna be out there in droves as well. Oh, okay. And the reality <laughs> is, well, I am still Bob. I know. <laughs> and this is still Life Redesign, but this is true, is that people are gonna tell you you're crazy. Mm -hmm. They're gonna tell you that you have no business being on the road, that it's unsafe, that you're gonna have all these problems. If it was all these problems and it was so unsafe, we wouldn't be here making a video right. every week. You, you're going to be putting yourself in different scenarios and different situations. So yes, you need to be aware of your surroundings, but the rest of it, a lot of it is jealousy. A lot is jealousy. And if you don't believe that, look at the comment section of any YouTube channel in RV life where they talk about the great aspects of RV life. There will be literally tens of people that will crap on the lifestyle saying that everything that you're doing is wrong and bad for you and everything's gonna fall apart. But yet they're watching RV channels from their house. Right. So a lot of it does come down to jealousy and a lot of it comes down to simple just not understanding. And if you type in RV life into any search engine, guess what you see? A whole bunch of those people like this yeah. on YouTube thumbnails. And it, it's really not like that. Yeah. And, then, and that's, the, I think, the biggest takeaways that Carrie and I have always been an advocate for this lifestyle, Absolutely. even since we were part-time, was that, you know, it is like anything else. Things break in your home, things break in your home that goes down the road. Mm -hmm. If you are a good tenant of your home and you take care of it, your home will stand there forever. If you do nothing and not worry about anything and just let it all go willy-nilly, you'll have the flood in the basement like we had. Yeah. And that will destroy your whole finished basement. Yeah. Life happens no matter how you are prepared or ill-prepared for it. Don't let somebody else tell you how to do no, this. No, and you're gonna have that moment, I promise you, when you're out there, you're gonna be like, oh my God, what did I do? So 
we our first have, week we had that well, experience. Well, that and then the first holiday, the first Christmas, the first Thanksgiving, the first, I was like, oh my God, this is the first time ever being away from the kids. Why are you Leave crying? It. Because you it were was okay sad. With this. It Everything was, was sad. Good. It is, but you're going to face that stuff too. Right. Like, it, it really, you really will. We, we spent, and I'll bring this in since we're apparently going down this road in this video, but our first Christmas away from the kids and yeah. our kids being adult children, um, we didn't know what to do. So we took off to Florida. We went to Universal Studios. And it was great. We had a great time. Just Gary and I. And we were there uh, Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, we spent driving back up to South Carolina. Now the kids have moved closer to yeah. us, so they'll be, you know, we like to be down in the south during the winter, so we're a little closer to them. So it all kind of goes full circle. It was just circle. that initial of, oh my God, what did we do? Yeah. And then, I don't regret any of it. I don't regret any of it. It was just, it was new. And that was our right. first new away from the kids. So if you have been around the channel for a long time, you know, when we went to get the kids and we moved down here, we had zero regrets for leaving that area. It was a fine area for what it was, but we're just so done with the small town politics and the small town thinking and mentality uh, that it was good just to get yeah. out of there. And it reaffirmed our decision to leave in the first place, sure did. which is good. This lifestyle of RV living and full-time traveling is amazing mm -hmm. as long as you're prepared and you know what to expect. Yeah. That's what we're here for is that we give you all the real aspects of life just in general. And it's very easy to sit here and have that nice green background through the rain. But what most people won't show you is that way up there, that is a gas station sign for the TA up there uh, because life isn't always a resort by the waterway. It's, well, a resort by the highway sometimes. <laughs> and that's what our channel hopefully is there for you. If there's other yeah. questions that you have or some things that we might have left out, leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from yeah. each and every one of you. And, and if uh, you don't feel comfortable with that, please email us with your questions. Or yeah, whatever. our email is in the video yeah. description. For I know anything. a lot of you guys use that. Yeah. yeah. And so that's it. That's what you're going to need to get at least started mm -hmm. so you can have that first day experience. And uh, we hope to see each and every one of you out there on the road. Until next time, I am Bob. I'm Carrie. And this has been Life Redesign. Bye-bye.